dear students in the last few sessions we had discussed about the <coughs> the sex organs of a human system there is both male and female the reproductive systems then the process called gametogenesis there is nothing but the sperm formation or spermatogenesis and egg formation oogenesis concept we have studied plus we have studied the structures of a gametes also like sperm as well as the human egg structures we had discussed in the case of the last sessions so today we'll what we'll going to do is we'll going to discuss <coughs> about the process of a fertilization how the fusion of the gametes takes place how the embryo development takes place what are all the changes will takes place during the embryogenesis all those concepts we're going to discuss now <coughs> there will be an, a process will be there called uh, insemination there is a insemination now what is mean, meaning of the word insemination <coughs> during the coitus or sexual intercourse during the coitus or during the sexual intercourse will be there <coughs> at the time there will be a deposition of a semen semen already we discussed is nothing but the seminal plasma plus a sperm combination that we call semen there is a deposition of a semen in the female reproductive tract that process we going to call it as insemination so it can be defined as a process of a deposition of a semen in the female reproductive tract if a question come for one mark how to write the point this is a way in which you should frame the sentence reproductive tract that process we call it as insemination now site of insemination i have mentioned there is a female reproductive tract naturally natural process what called sexual intercourse will be there because there is a artificial insemination concept also will going to come that you will going to study in detail in the chapter called reproductive health fourth chapter now during the natural insemination the semen will be deposited in the region called a vagina so site of insemination is uh, in the vagina once the semen is got deposited the deposited semen will undergo the process called clotting if you recall the point in the seminal vesicle i have told you there will be an a uh, secretion will be the seminal plasma 60% of seminal plasma will be contributed by the seminal vesicles that secretion will contain one protein that is called fibrinogen so there will be an a clotting of a semen will going to take place there will be clotting of a semen will going to take place and semen will be in a clotted condition for about 15 minutes in the region of a vagina that is because of the protein the protein is a fibrinogen fibrinogen name you have studied in the first pc syllabus also in the chapter called body fluid and circulation in a blood clotting or coagulation of blood there is one of the blood clotting factor will be there called fibrinogen same thing will be there in the case of a seminal plasma that's why there's a clotting will be there it will be remains in the case of clotted condition for about 15 minutes after that there is a liquefaction of a semen will going to take place there is a liquefaction of a semen clotted semen undergo liquefaction in the male reproductive system there is an axillary glands will be there one is seminal vesicle one pair of a seminal vesicles will be there that will going to have what is called the fructose secretion will contain fructose calcium will be there fibrinogen also will be there next one is a single prostate gland will be there that prostate gland will going to encircle the male urethra that contribute around 40% of the seminal plasma that seminal plasma contain one protein called fibrinolysin 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 is a protein will be present in the case of seminal plasma the clotted semen should undergo liquefaction that is because of the protein called fibrinolysin once the semen undergo what you call the <coughs> clotting as well as the liquefaction this will be followed by in the process called capacitation will be there 
there is a process called a capacitation now in the case of capacitation what is going to happen it is a physiological process during which uh, sperm attain the motility and bring about the fertilization so the physiological process by which uh, sperm attain the motility we going to call it as the process called capacitation sperms attain motility now it shows faster movement will be there this is because in the case of a sperm entire sperm human sperm if i taken unicellular structure entire structure is enveloped by the plasma membrane in the plasma membrane of an animal cell there is one lipid will be there called cholesterol so during the capacitation there will be an a removal of a cholesterol will be there there will be a removal of a cholesterol cholesterol will be removed from which part from the plasma membrane all right pm stand for plasma membrane of a sperm head <coughs> from the sperm head plus there is a influx of a calcium ion also will be there there is a inhibitory factor also will be there that also will be removed but usually we'll take the concept of a cholesterol this is one of the mcq point also cholesterol will be removed from the plasma membrane of the sperm head because of that sperm now start to move at a faster rate the rate of movement <coughs> rate of a movement of a sperms now in the female reproductive tract will be 1 to 3 millimeter per minute in this rate the sperm will start to move in the case of female reproductive tract that will passes through the cervical canal passes through the uterine cavity then enter to the region called the fallopian tube we have studied in the case of our previous sessions fallopian tube <coughs> or uterine duct or ov duct acceptable words will have a three parts one is infundibulum funnel shaped structure having fimbriae which is present near the surface of the ovary it will be followed by the region called the ampulla ampulla stand for wider part ampulla stand for wider part ampulla of a fallopian tube it will be followed by narrow elongated tubular part will be there called isthmus so like this there will be three parts will be there now the sperm will passes through the the fallopian tube lumen of a fallopian tube and reaches the region called ampulla so in the region of a ampulla there is a phenomena called fertilization will be there now there is a fertilization process will be there so what is fertilization is a process of a fusion of male and female gametes similarly here also there is a fusion of a sperm and an egg will going to take place that is nothing but the fertilization where actually fertilization on the site will be there if you refer the new ncrt textbook they had given the point ampulla of a fallopian tube if you refer the ncrt book prior to the 2018 book published prior to 2018 it is given as an ampullary isthmic junction now the correction has been made now the site of fertilization is a ampulla of a fallopian tube ampulla of a fallopian tube please do remember this is a site of a fertilization now during the fertilization or how the fertilization process will going to take place in case of human being that is a concept <coughs> So there will be process of a fertilization what are the steps will going to take place during the fertilization first event is nothing but the approximation of a sperm towards a egg towards the egg sperm will move towards the egg because we know sperm in a case of human being is a flagellated structure egg word itself indicate what is the meaning of the word egg egg meaning is non motal female gamete all female gamete cannot be known as egg if a female gamete if it is a non motal then only we call it as what you call the egg a word is the statement is applicable for both botany also and zoology also so there will be a movement of the sperm will be that towards the egg <coughs> 
when you go to the uh, uh, need class at the time they will let you know they will go to elaborate the point there will be gammons will be there hormone like compound secreted by the gametes which is responsible for the approximation of gametes plus the sperm will start to move towards what you call the egg after that second event will be there called penetration of a sperm there will be penetration of a sperm into egg penetration of sperm will be there into the egg if i take the human egg <coughs> in the case of a human egg spherical shaped and do not have a yolk the reserve food material called yolk will not be there so here outermost covering we going to call it as oolemma we call it as oolemma oolemma stand for plasma membrane of the egg and it will going to enclose us a ooplasm contain the fluid called o plasma will be there o plasma stand for what you call the the fluid part of the or cytoplasmic fluid of the egg outer to the o plasma there will be an a glycoproteinaceous layer will be there outer to the o lemma there will be an a glycoproteinaceous layer that glycoproteinaceous layer we call it as zona pellucida we call it as zona pellucida so zona pellucida stand for a glycoproteinaceous layer present outside the oolemma this zona pellucida what will be there will be secreted by the egg itself that's why sometime we even use the word primary egg membrane it is known as a primary egg membrane primary egg membrane mean egg membrane produced by the egg itself or secreted by the egg itself that is nothing but the the primary egg membrane here in case of human egg it is called zona pellucida outer to the zona pellucida there will be some follicular cells will be there the follicular cells uh, which will going to envelop uh, all over the surface all over the surface it will have what you call the follicular cells will be there this follicular cells <coughs> like this there will be follicular cells will going to come between the follicular cell generally we can use the word granular cells also but i'll use the word follicular cell easy to remember at time of examination so these individual cells are nothing but the follicular cells between the follicular cells there will be some chemical compounds will be there there is a mucopolysaccharide or just i'll say carbohydrate there is a carbohydrate will be there this com cell compound we going to call it, call it a hyaluronic acid we call it as hyaluronic acid now the follicular cells forming a envelope outside the zona pellucida we call this entire structure this entire structure as a corona radiata we going to call it as corona radiata so in case of corona radiata there is a follicular cells will be there between the follicular cell there will be compound called hyaluronic acid this corona radiata is nothing but the secondary egg membrane secondary egg membrane so here secondary egg membrane is a form from the follicular cells so that mean in a human egg there will be two membranes will be there zona pellucida which is a primary egg membrane corona radiata which is secondary egg membrane will be there now sperm in the region of ampulla comes in contact with the first one is a corona radiata here like this there will be follicular cells will be there now sperm head will comes in contact with the corona radiata we know it to the anterior part of the sperm head there will be an a cell organelle will be there that cell organelle is a acrosome acrosome is present in front of a nucleus haploid nucleus of the sperm will be there in front of it there is a cell organelle called acrosome also the giant lysosome once the sperm comes in contact with the corona radiata <coughs> now this acrosome releases enzyme because acrosome already told you giant lysosome 
if you recall the point about the the cell the unit of life chapter lysosome a single membrane cell organelle which contain hydrolytic enzymes like uh, carbohydrolases proteases lipases nucleases these are all the hydrolytic enzymes which can do the work at acidic ph so acid hydrolysis will be there similarly acrosome also contain one uh, hydrolysis the hydrolysis is a uh, hyaluronidase name of an enzyme is a uh, hyaluronidase this hyaluronidase uh, what will do it will going to digest the hyaluronic acid which is present between the follicular cells that mean corona radiata portion will be get digested by the action of hyaluronidase secreted by the acrosome now the acrosome comes in contact with the the sec what called the primary egg membrane that primary egg membrane is a zona pellucida so again i'll repeat the point sperm head comes in contact with the corona radiata when it comes in contact with the corona radiata acrosome secrete the enzyme hyaluronidase or just you can write hydrolytic enzyme hydrolases are secreted that hydrolases will go on to digest the hyaluronic acid present between the follicular cells then the portion of the corona radiata get digested now the sperm head comes in contact with the which portion now comes in contact with the zona pellucida contact with the zona pellucida now in the case of a zona pellucida when it comes in contact <coughs> there will be an a protein will be there in the zona pellucida so in the zona pellucida there will be an a sperm receptor will be there already told you zona pellucida glycoproteinaceous glyco carbohydrate plus protein combination that is zona pellucida so the protein present here it will be zp3 that is called the sperm receptor present in the zona pellucida in the sperm head there is a plasma membrane will be there that plasma membrane also have a protein that you studied in the first pc the cell the unit of life chapter plasma membrane has a protein lipid and carbohydrate will be there so proteins <coughs> present in the plasma membrane of the sperm head has a sp56 will be there name of a protein is a sp56 now zp3 present in the zona pellucida and sp56 protein present in the plasma membrane of the sperm head will going to interact when that interact sperm will going to attach to the zona pellucida sperm attaches to the zona pellucida attack at, attraction is possible be, between the zp3 present in the zona pellucida with the sp56 protein present in the case of sperm head once the attachment takes place now the acrosome will going to release another enzyme that enzyme is a acrosin or you can write right, sperm lysin also now acrosome release an enzyme acrosin or sperm lysin that will go on to digest the zona pellucida digest the zona pellucida corona radiata will be digested by the enzyme hyaluronidase zona pellucida will be digested by the enzyme acrosin now the sperm head comes in contact with the plasma membrane of the egg there is nothing but the oolemma and after that there will be an entry of a sperm will be there into the oplasma <coughs> there will be entry will be there entry of a sperm will be there into the egg at that time head and middle piece of the sperm will enter head and a middle piece of the sperm will going to enter into the oplasma once the sperm has entered into the oplasma see here beneath the oolemma there will be <coughs> granules will be there there will be granules present in the oplasma near to the oolemma mean to say towards the periphery towards the periphery there will be granules will be there these granules we call it as cortical granules 
we call it as cortical granules will be that now cortical granules why the word cortical if i take the organ stem if i taken root if i taken the peripheral part of the structure we going to call it as cortex center part or inner part we call medulla similarly adrenal gland outer part adrenal cortex inner part medulla adrenal medulla brain cerebrum will be the peripheral cerebral cortex inner cerebral medulla similarly in the uplasma in the peripheral part granules will be the that's why the word cortical granules now this cortical granules will going to come out from the ulema by exocytosis so cortical granules will be released once the cortical granules are released cortical granules are released what they do in the case of a zona pellucida i have told you there is one sperm receptor will be there sperm receptor which is that sperm receptor zp3 protein is a zp3 now the released cortical granule will destroy the zp3 once the zp3 protein present in the zona pellucida are destroyed whether the other sperm can come and attach to the zona pellucida no that mean once one sperm has entered into the u plasma release of the cortical granule prevent the entry of a more than one sperm into the egg by the removal of a sperm receptor present in the zona pellucida that mean <coughs> release to cortical granules what they do prevents the release cortical granule prevents the polyspermy prevents the polyspermy so what is the meaning of the word polyspermy poly means many sperm means sperm so entry of more than one sperm into the egg is prevented that means they are allowed to enter only one sperm into the egg so only one sperm or the nucleus can fertilize us with the egg now one when this event will takes place when this event what called this sperm entry into the oplasma has taken place this egg is not completed its meiotic division recall the point in the oogenesis concept i have told you <coughs> meiosis will be there meiosis 1 which got arrested in the re at the time of a diakinesis at the time of diakinesis at the time of a birth then it will remains like that till the girl reaches the menarche menarche mere first menstruation we call that is nothing but the menarche <coughs> after the menarche every month a few primor, primary follicles start to grow primary follicles start to grow then they changes into the structure called a secondary oocyte at that time what will happen primary oocyte what will be there primary oocyte whose division is arrested in diakinesis undergoes meiosis 1 and produce one large cell we going to call it as secondary oocyte and one small cell called first polar body these are the point we already discussed first polar body now this secondary oocyte will undergo meiosis 2 meiosis 2 but the division got arrested in the metaphase 2 that's why in the last session i have told you oogenesis is a discontinuous process because the division of meiosis will be get arrested at two stages one during the diakinesis at the time of birth and at the time of a ovulation release of the egg from the graafian follicle we call ovulation at that time the division of the secondary oocyte is not completed it is at the metaphase 2 now when the sperm has enter into the structure called egg but actually it is a secondary oocyte which is actually secondary oocyte in this secondary oocyte division is arrested in which stage in a metaphase 2 now the secondary oocyte complete its meiotic division and it going to form a egg or ovum egg and o or ovum second polar body 
small cell will be the second polar body or polocyte first second polar body or second polocyte so now egg will be there plus in the periphery there will be an a two cells will be the smaller cell one is a first polar body and another one is a second polar body and here the nucleus will be the of what you call the egg this is now the egg now in the egg there will be sperm head as end when this event is completed means it's a meiotic division of a egg has been completed there will be expel of a first polar body and second polar body so first and second polar body will be expelled from the egg only after the entry of a sperm after that the third event will going to take place the third event is nothing but the amphimixis there will be amphimixis will be there amphimixis in this case is nothing but the fusion of a male nucleus or nucleus of a sperm and female nucleus or nucleus of the egg <coughs> that is nothing but the amphimixis once amphimixis takes place we will going to get the here diploid nucleus will going to form the diploid nucleus now present in the egg we going to call it as syncarion now we going to call it as a syncarion now egg what will be there now what the egg will be there inside its syncarion will be there now the egg is known as a zygote zygote so that mean amphimixis takes place resulted in the formation of a syncarion and syncarion is present inside the egg now the egg is known as a zygote already you studied in the first chapter reproduction organism chapter zygote is uni, uh, always diploid unicellular structure now single cell structure has been formed so these are all the event which will takes place during the process of a fertilization so what is the product of fertilization it will be the zygote <coughs> so fertilization has taken place now there is a product of a fertilization will be that the product of fertilization is zygote diploid in nature and what is the cat feature of this zygote in case of human being it will have outer zona pellucida zona pellucida is still intact outer to that it is still have the structure called corona radiata will be there corona radiata now where actually zygote has formed the site of zygote formation site of zygote formation just now we discuss site of fertilization in human being site of fertilization in the human being is in the region of a ampulla a fallopian tube there itself there is a zygote has been formed it is the ampulla of a fallopian tube ampulla of a fallopian tube where zygote has been formed once a zygote has formed it will undergo the further process now in case of a animal <coughs> there will be a process will be there called embryogenesis will be there next one there is a embryogenesis process will be there now in the case of embryogenesis what will happen zygote first chapter concept zygote diploid in nature this zygote will undergo mitotic division repeated mitosis and it will go on to form a structure called a embryo concept is applicable for both higher groups of a plant as well as an animal same concept will going to come here zygote what will be there which will be unicellular whereas the embryo will be multicellular in nature normal circumstances it will be diploid in nature so zygote will develop into what you call structure called embryo so this the process of formation of a multicellular embryo from unicellular zygote 
by repeated mitotic division we go on to call it a embryogenesis in short formation of a embryo there is another word the embryogenesis how the steps will going to take place first one zygote will be the single cell structure diploid in nature undergo mitosis that mitotic division in the case of a human zygote we go on to call it as cleavage division or we call it as a cleavage first cleavage is going to take place first cleavage usually takes place 24 hours after first after the fertilization this is a zygote outside it there is a zona pellucida will be there this is a zona pellucida imagine now there will be cleavage will be there first division will take place resulted in the formation of a two cells result in the formation of a two cells two celled stage will going to form that two cell stage again undergo cleavage division cleavage 2 cleavage 2 resulted in the formation of a four cells four cell again undergo cleavage it will going to form eight cells eight cells will go on to form 16 cells now what the 8 to 16 cell stage will be there we are going to call this structure as a morula we are going to call it as a morula that morula stage further continues the division again undergo mitotic division and form a structure called a blastocyst form a structure called a blastocyst so these are the events will going to take place in the region of a fallopian tube ampulla is a site where the fertilization takes place 24 hours after the fertilization zygote undergo cleavage division okay now what is meant by cleavage cleavage also known as a segmentation division cleavage also known as a segmentation division now if you recall the point about the cell cycle concept <coughs> of first you say cell reproduction concept cell cycle will be the short phase m phase there will be g1 there will be s there will be g2 this is the way in which our cell cycle will going to proceed in the case of a cell cycle cell will go on to enlarges cell enlargement takes place in the phase called interphase g1 s and g2 phase we go on to call interphase so in that phase cell enlargement will be there in the case of the cleavage division it is nothing but the mitotic division only but the differ from the normal mitotic division by cell enlargement will not be there then in the board examination if a question come what is cleavage division or segmentation division it is nothing but the repeated mitotic division repeated mitotic division without cell enlargement without cell enlargement that process we going to call it as what I call the cleavage division that means cell do not spend much time in the case of interface cell do not spend the much time in the interface there is a less possibility of a cell enlargement will be there that means if you take the size of the zygote and if you take the size of the two cell stage size will be of the structures will be remain same but uh, here it will be one cell here it will be two cell what the dot cells are being formed by the cleavage division we are going to call the blastomere see here this is the zona pellucida beneath that there will be an a zygote was there has undergone the holoblastic cleavage division has been completed complete division of the cell will going to take place that's why holoblastic cleavage resulted in the two cell that two cells are known as a blastomeres we call it as a blastomeres so cells formed during the cleavage division we call it blastomeres now it become two cell embryo 
now it will again undergo division it will become four cells after that become eight cells and 16 cell stage will be there that stage we going to call it as marula that mean as the cleavage division proceed size of the embryo remains the same but the size of the blastomere gradually decreases this point you should remember embryo size will not going to increase the size of the embryo remains same but the size of the daughter cells formed by every cleavage division gradually decreases because there will not be any cell enlargement will be there now because of the cleavage division we will going to get the product so the product of a cleavage division is nothing but the marula <coughs> So there will be a stage will be there we going to call it as a marula m o r u l a marula so what is marula in case of a marula it will be a solid mass of a embryo it is a solid mass of a embryo without a cavity without a cavity because when we explain the concept of blastocyst i let you know later in that there is a cavity formation will be there here cavity will not be there that's why we can say solid mass of embryo how many cells it will be 8 to 16 cells will be there number will be 8 to 16 8 to 16 when you take on the strategies in for the enhancement of food grain production chapter there will be an 8 to 32 cell structure concept also will going to come related to what called the cattle here it will be connected to human being 8 to 16 cell stages will be there that is called morula then the way the word marula marula because this embryo marula is an embryo because it will have 8 to 16 cells will be the form from the zygote but repeated by the division it resemble the it resemble the fruit of a mulberry plant fruit of a mulberry plant botanical name morus alba morus alba that's why the word marula this marula still have the structure called a zona pellucida still have the structure called zona pellucida zona pellucida not been removed still it will be there now this marula has been formed in the fallopian tube when this embryogenesis or marula formation takes place uh, there will be <coughs> this is the fallopian tube like this there will be uterus part this is the infantibulum having a finger like projections that finger like projections we going to call it as a fimbriae and here there will be an a ovary will be there this is the ovary now here the release egg will be there egg has reaches the region called a ampulla and in this region of ampulla fertilization has taken place sperm has entered into the egg after that there will be formation of a two cell stage there will be formation of a four cell stage there will be formation of a eight cell stage at the time it will have a covering called zona pellucida which, is, which was there in the case of egg same thing will be there now what the embryo has formed it is not a stationary it is not remains in the fallopian tube it start to move while discussing about the fallopian tube i have told you the lumen of a fallopian tube what will be there it will be lined by the ciliated epithelium it will have a ciliated epithelium will be there ciliated columnar epithelial cells will go to come the cilia present in the lumen of the fallopian tube will going to beat towards the uterus side this is the uterus so there will be beating of a cilia will be there towards the uterus side because of that embryo will move in the fallopian tube towards the uterus so in the board examination we can ask the question the movement of cilia in the case of fallopian tube is due to answer has to be related to ciliated epithelium now this marula what will be there just now explain 8 to 16 cell stage structure it will be when it reaches the <coughs> uterus it is in the stage called blastocyst we call it as a blastocyst so blastocyst what is it it will be an a blastula 
of a mammalian embryo mammalian embryo having outer trophoectoderm trophoectoderm and inner cell mass inner cell mass inner cell mass is technical word not just cell mass inner cell mass is a word or we can use a word embryoblast also alternate word will be embryoblast with the cavity the cavity we going to call it as blastocele marula which is a solid mass of embryo without cavity by the further division develop into structure called blastocyst so blastocyst when we taken <coughs> appears like this it has the outer cells these outer cells we call it as trophy ectoderm trophoblast also we can use <coughs> so like this structure will be that this structure is a trophoectoderm will be that towards the one pole there will be group of uh, cells will be there which are attached to the trophoblast like this there will be group of cells which are attached to the trophoblast this group of cells we going to call it as inner cell mass inner cell mass plus it will have a cavity that cavity we going to call it as blastocell blastocell now the inner cell mass what will be there is attached to the trophoblast by the cells here some cells will be there which helps in the attachment of a inner cell mass to the trophoblast that cells we going to call it a cells of a rauber we going to call cells of rauber plus outer to this one it will have the glycoproteinaceous layer there will be an a glycoproteinaceous layer will be there that glycoproteinaceous layer we going to call it as zona pellucida zona pellucida this is the structure of a blastocyst of a human being so blastocyst will have a cavity previous one marula do not have a cavity when actually blastocyst will going to form blastocyst will going to form 7 days after fertilization seven day after fertilization there is a formation of a structure will be there called blastocyst this blastocyst by seven day after fertilization will reach as the region called uterus that movement is possible because of the ciliary action present in the lumen of a fallopian tube now once the blastocyst has reaches the uterus there will be a further process will going to take place the further process is there is a process called implantation will be there there is a process called a implantation will be there now what is meant by implantation so implantation is nothing but the attachment of a blastocyst attachment of a blastocyst to the uterine endometrium uterine endometrium this process we going to call it as implantation let me recall the point what we just discussed now in the concept has been started with the word called insemination site of insemination is vagina similarly there is a process will be there called capacitation in the case of pus level or a board syllabus as well as in the case of mcq examination we just use the word capacitation takes place in a female reproductive tract we are not going to elaborate which part of it 
okay after that there is a fertilization fertilization takes place in the ampulla of a fallopian tube after that the embryo in the stage called blastocyst reaches the uterus for implantation so then site of a implantation site of a implantation where on a uterine endometrium on a uterine endometrium you may raise a question why i am repeatedly using uterine endometrium because endometrium can form outside the uterus also indirectly this concept will going to come in the fourth chapter reproductive health chapter if endometrium form outside the uterus maybe in a fallopian tube maybe in a peritoneum then we call such condition as endometriosis endometriosis meaning is formation of endometrium outside the uterus but here i am talking about uterine endometrium in the region of a uterus inner wall of uterus has a glandular mucous membrane which is the site of a implantation this is the fallopian tube this is the uterus this is the endometrium <clears throat> on this region attachment has to be takes place assume in this region endometrium has been formed fallopian tubally then the condition is called endometriosis and here i have told you there will be an a embryo is moving not single cell multicellular embryo is moving that embryo has a part called a zona pellucida that mean embryo till reaches the uterus it will have a zona pellucida what happens if the zona pellucida get digested zona pellucida if it is not there then there is a possibility of uh, this embryo may get attached to the endometrium by chance if it formed in the fallopian tube that's why in the next chapter we come across one word called ectopic pregnancy will be there there is a ectopic pregnancy pregnancy established outside the uterus maybe in this region in this condition in the fallopian tube that's why to prevent the attachment of a embryo other than a uterus embryo till reach reaches uterus it will have a zona pellucida that is to prevent the ectopic pregnancy now once the uter uh, the endometrium has reaches the region called a uterus what will going to happen zona pellucida will be get uh, digested zona pellucida will get rupture will not be there now outer part will be there in the case of a blastocyst already i told you outer part will be there what do you call the outer part outer part is known as a trophoblast present all over the structure there is a trophoblast will be there now from the trophoblast or trophy ectoderm what will be there there will be an a finger like projections will going to arise the finger like projections arises from the trophy ectoderm we call it as chorionic villi remember there is a structure will going to call chorionic villi from this structure chorionic villi will going to arise this chorionic villi arise from the trophy ectoderm plus there will be an inner part called inner cell mass already have mentioned inner cell mass also known as a embryo blast another name for it is a embryo blast so now inner cell mass or embryo blast is developed into actual embryo develop into the structure called a embryo will be there now from the trophoblast what the finger like structures are going to arise what you call the finger like projection arise from trophectoderm chorionic villi this chorionic villi now secrete hydrolytic enzymes secrete hydrolytic enzymes will be there see here <coughs> this is the endometrium part endometrium here blastocyst will come and attaches 
when the attaches the trophoblast uh, will going to produce finger like projections like this these finger like projection arises from the trophoblast we going to call it as chorionic villi we call it as chorionic villi what the chorionic villi will going to do chorionic villi secret hydrolytic enzyme that hydrolytic enzyme will going to corrode the endometrium will going to corrode the endometrium when they corrode the endometrium in the endometrium you no know aid there is a rich with the blood vessels well during the menstrual cycle concept i have explained the point the endometrium part what will be there which will have a two layer basal layer but the functional layer here are regions are there the functional layer what will be there which will have blood vessels remember and that number of or the 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 Uh, um, the number of blood vessels or blood capillary what will be there will gradually increases during the menstrual cycle that's why here when a chorionic will like corrode the endometrium blood start to ooze out in that pool of a blood in the pool of a blood of a endometrium these chorionic will like are get dipped so that they can draw the nourishment they can draw the nourishment so what is the function of the chorionic villi chorionic villi are the finger like projections arise from the trophoectoderm secret hydrolytic enzyme which corrode the portion of a uterine endometrium break the blood vessels or blood capillary better word blood capillary make the blood to ooze out in that pool of blood the chorionic villi get dipped that process we going to call it as a implantation when actually blastocyst reaches the uterus it reaches the uterus 7 day after fertilization now how much time is required for the process called implantation 3 days is required that mean by 10th day after fertilization 10th day after fertilization there will be an implantation process will get completed implantation process will be get completed so these are the point related to the concept called implantation so implantation nothing but the attachment of the embryonic structure called blastocyst to the uterine endometrium will be there that is possible with the help of a structure called a chorionic villi <coughs> yeah now once the <coughs> attachment of a embryo has been taken place to the uterine endometrium <coughs> then i can say pregnancy has been established known as a conception we can call it as conception so concept what is the mean how i can define the word conception i am using the word conception because even though it's the not there in the ncert because in the next chapter we will going to study the concept called contraception contraceptives which are the devices contraceptives are the devices or chemicals or drugs which are being used to prevent the what called pregnancy that's why i'm using the word here conception to understand that what you call the concept what you're going to study in the case coming session so there will be concept will be there called conception conception is nothing but the fertilization and subsequent establishment of a subsequent establishment of a pregnancy that phenomena we going to call it as what you call the conception generally we can say pregnancy has been started so when actually going to start 10th day after fertilization when the implantation will get completed when implantation takes place what the embryo will be there called blastocyst completely buried in the endometrium of the uterus should be completely buried in the endometrium because endometrium will over grow will grow on the structure called the blastocyst once this process has been taken place uh, there will be a structure will be there called placenta formation will be there there is a structure called placenta <coughs> in the sexual reproduction of flowering plant as well as in the first pc morphology of flowering plant we have studied the term called placenta 
there we have studied placenta is a nutritive tissue in the ovary i am talking about the angiosperm to which ovules are attached placenta there it is a tissue in case of a human being or in a case of mammal i am talking about the eutheria eutheria word we have studied in the first puc in animal kingdom mammals are of three category prototheria egg laying mammal ornithorhynchus echidna these are the example we studied next one is a pouched mammal marsupials kangaroo macropus next one eutheria true placental mammal human being comes in the case of true placental mammal so in the case of placental mammal when we are taken there is a structure called placenta ncrt says it is the structural and functional unit structural and functional unit between fetus and maternal system mother's body maternal system this is according to ncrt textbook is considered that is nothing but the placenta now in the case of placenta when we take an it will have a two parts will be that just now i had done the diagram how the implantation takes place it will have a part called fetal part it will have a fetal part will be that just to understand the concept i'll take chorionic villi there will be structure will be there called chorionic villi plus uh, there will be a maternal part also will be there maternal part that maternal part is a endometrium or uterine endometrium uterine endometrium so there is the chorionic villi which is a tissue endometrium also tissue glandular mucous membrane is the inner membrane of a uterus that means both are tissue tissue aggregate forms a structure called organ then in case of a human being or in a case of a mammal placenta is a organ placenta is a organ in the case of a uh, the uh, sexual reproductive flowering plant placenta is a tissue here it is made up of two kind of tissue fetal tissue will be there and a maternal tissue that's why i can call this one as a feto maternal organ can be known as a feto maternal organ fetal tissue also will be there maternal tissue also will be there generalize the point it is made of two kind of tissue then i can say dual organ it is a dual organ which is as formed between the fetus and maternal system fetus and maternal system that structure is nothing but the placenta now when you take in the human placenta <coughs> one of the very popular concept in the case of a board examination concept the functions will going to come 